today we will be looking at the poem the leader and the lead by Niyi Osundare. Niyi Osundare is a popular poet from Nigeria uh, in the southwestern Nigeria, the Yoruba Bai tribe. He has written a lot of an uh, anthology of poems. One of it is Village Voices and several other anthologies. He is a seasoned uh, poet uh, who is known worldwide and uh, his poems have been used for several exams, external exams, universities and high schools uh, examinations. So the leader and the lead, we are going to be analyzing the poem. We will be looking at the thematic concerns of the poem. We will also look at the literary devices in use in the poem. And we will also have activity at the end of the uh, lesson so that you can evaluate yourself. So the leader and the lead depict different kinds of politicians who fight for power and leadership position in Nigeria and Africa. So the poem has 12 stanzas. Uh, first, each stanza of the it has 12 stanzas divided into two form. We have stanza 1 to 7, where each stanza of the stanza 1 to 7 has contrasting ideas and um, uh, which represent the leadership problems in Africa. And also, we have stanza 8 to 12, which provide solutions to the problems. So, the poet uses animal characters to depict the different kinds of politicians in Nigeria and Africa. So, uh, we'll be looking at the poem now. And uh, uh, we'll read the stanza one. Uh, look at this is stanza one, two, three, and four. Let's start with the stanza one. The lion stick his claim to the leadership of the pack. But the antelope remember the ferocious pounce of his paws. So, the poem start by presenting the lion stick to the throne, to the leadership. So, the pack in this poem, in these lines, represent Nigeria or African nations. So, the lion stick his claim to the leadership of the pack. The lion represents the kind of leaders who seek for power because of their physical strength and bravery. So, these kind of leaders assert and compel people to obey them through the use of force, through the use of coercion. So, they use their strength, power, and authority to instill fear on their followers. And make them to submit to their own will. So, lions are very brave and not spooky. They roar. So, a quality of these leaders who are represented by lion possesses and use effectively uh, their great oratory power to manipulate people's belief. So. Look at the second stanza, but the antelope remember the ferocious pounce of the poor. So, the followers in this stanza are the antelopes. Antelopes are animals known for taking quick actions and with keen eyesight for being watchful. So, they are praised to lions. The lions are reminded of their destructive devouring nature and intimidating tactics. Look at the fourth line, pounds on his paw. So they remember what the lions do. So the antelope can be likened to the elites and the educated members of the society. The top, the top civil servant in the uh, government structure. So look at stanza three, the Hyana says the crown is made for him, but the impalas 
shoulder at his leather appetite. The giraffe craved a place in the forefront, but his eyes are too far from the ground. So the hyena says the crown is made for him, which is in line five. So the hyena is the next animal to quickly lay claim to the throne, to quickly lay throne to the power. So these are the set of leaders who see political positions and their entitlement. So in this poem, the leader and the lead, these leaders which are represented by Hyannas feel the people should be grateful for having them as leaders. So therefore, they strive to hold on to power until death. So Hyanna are usually associated with death and feeding on carcass and they don't hunt for their food but wait for other animals to hunt. Then they come to take over. So these are the kind of politicians that are after what they will gain from ascending to power, from ascending to throne. So these leaders are opportunists and are very selfish. So no wonder, look at uh, the next stanza, uh, the next line, but the impala's shoulder at his later appetite. So no wonder that the poet uses the impalas to remind the Hyana of their bad side. This is found in this line six. Look at line six here. But the impalas shoulder at his leader appetite. So the impalas fear these leaders will bring with them wars, jahos, tribal sentiment, religious bad country, and several other problems associated with political leadership in Africa. So the impalas are afraid of the politicians represented by Hayana in this poem. And they bring a lot of destruction. So then let's look at the giraffe craft a place in the front, that is stanza four. But his eyes are too far from the ground. So next, the quest for leadership position is the giraffe. The giraffe is known for vision and gracefulness because of the length of its neck and the way it carries itself. So then the pack, I told you at the beginning of the lesson that the pack is used to represent Nigeria and African nation. So the pack rejects the giraffe because the vision is fake. The vision is unclear. The vision is not so bright. Look at it in line 8. But his eyes are too far from the ground. That is, he will not lead with such carefulness that the populace will benefit from his leadership. So those kind of politicians that are represented by giraffe here may not be so concerned about the feeling of the people. Rather, it is what they will also gain. So they can lead and the people will be suffering but they go, they do not mind so that is why the populace complain in this line that his eyes are too far from the ground so this reflect and this reflect african leaders with vague vision so these leaders care about less important things and focus on bogus a non-realistic project which probably only satisfy the need of set of people that are in their government you can see a politician in africa campaigning and say within one year he is going to provide three million jobs so these are unrealistic projects and when they ascend the ascend to power the next thing they will begin playing game is the past administration that make them not to achieve their promises and manifesto. This and that, they, uh, they inherited the road government, they inherited the destroyed uh, country. So they will begin to blame their predecessors so that they will use that as uh, a means to defend their failure. Now, look at stanza five. When the zebra says it is his right to lead, 
the pack points to the duplicity of his stripes. Now, the other animal that lay claim to the leadership of African nations, to the leadership of Nigeria, is the zebra. So, when the zebra lay claim to it, the poet uses the pack to remind him, that is the zebra, of the duplicity of his strife in line in this line in this which is line 10. so the duplicity of zebra strife depict the unpredictability the the zebra is unpredictable unpredictable of some kinds of uh, leaders they are so unpredictable these leaders are deceitful in nature and unstable with their policies and campaign promises. So they flutter at criticism because they are not sure of what is right or appropriate for the nations. So you can see how. Now look at the next one, elephant. The elephant trudge into the power tussle, but its colleague dread his tramped feet. So you can see that uh, the leaders are the leaders who are represented by this elephant are those who threat who are threat to other people's life. So the 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 the, the watchdog, the populace, term this kind of politician as too ugly. They describe them as rioters, as people that can cause problem or cause death to other. So the poet shifts the blame to the followers. Now, look at the next stanza. The watchdog is too ugly. The reno too rioters. And the pack trashes around like a snake without a head. So there is a shift here now. The poet shifted the blame to the follower. These followers reject these leaders because of their appearances without considering the innate, the intrinsic qualities which they possess. But in reality, these leaders are judged by what is known about them. So, no nation wants an infamous leader. So, this can be as a result of the leaders, in the, the rascality of the leaders in the past. So unfortunately, look at it, the Reno, in this line, the Reno two rioters. So you can see what the Reno, unfortunately, the Reno is solidly, the Reno, unfortunately, the Reno's solidity is, um, is also a threat because Leadership quality requires flexible flexibility as a quality. So we also say now look at it. Let's go to this one. Our need call for hybrid of habit. Proclaim the forest sage. So the sage profile hybrid leadership. A would be a leader should become someone who has little bit of difference quality different qualities possessed a very uh, bright vision of the people and the society that is the path so the quality of bravery strength creativity stability flexibility meekness and gentility mix in a bottle in a particular person so look at it tough like a tiger passionate like a doe transparent like a river, mistrust like a lake. So this is the kind of leader that the society wants. So look at the last of the lines. Look at the last of the lines. A leader who knows how to follow followers, mindful of their right to lead. So the poet concludes the poem by standing that a leader in Africa should be mindful that every follower under his leadership knows that it is his or her right to rule, just like the leader. So 
he presents leadership as a humbly position and not an enticing position to amount wealth, to governize wealth, to appropriate public fund and riches to oneself. So, however, the poet uses this poem to condemn the desire of African leaders to cling to power on the debt. African leaders need to relinquish power at the end of the tenure of office. And you can see, like now in Uganda, we have Museveni who has ruled for over 30 years. In Rwanda, the leader has ruled for over 10 years. So, these are the kind of leadership that the poem condemn that after the tenure of office there shouldn't be constant amendment of the constitution to suit the greediness of one leader and that leadership should have a tenure where if you rule for this eight years for this six years you should leave the throne leadership for others instead of ruling and extending going for 30 10, going for 40 10, going for many years so that is what the poet Ni or Sundari try to condemn the insatiable lust for power among African leaders. So African leaders need to relinquish power at the end of their tenure. So this inquiry into Ni or Sundari, the leader and the led, depict different kind of position who fight for power in Africa. So this is the analysis that is the explanation i have been making since and um for the benefit of you to read it again and uh, have a good and a better understanding of it this paragraph one and this is second paragraph of the analysis and also look at the third paragraph of it i have explained it extensively in the in when we are reading doing the analysis so please i'll read through these paragraphs also so that you have more understanding of the poem and remember to subscribe to the channel so that uh, you will get notified when other uh, videos are uploaded the videos of literary devices the teams will soon be uploaded so make sure you subscribe so that you get it when it is uploaded. Thank you.